everybody. How's it going? It's been a little while since I produced a YouTube video, so I thought I'd bring everybody up to date. This one's kind of, this video is kind of dedicated to Chris. You got Chris here launch, about to launch. Uh, he's going to get in the air what, with his charger and his top 80. Uh, he's been one of my uh, most consistent flying buddies uh, up, into, up until this point here. I think this was early October probably. And uh, he got in the air on this particular day, made a, made a nice fight with me. I'm going to get in the air. We'll show my launch just to get us kicked off. But um, I think it was the next day or, or the next weekend, next outing right after this, where uh, he had some motor troubles. His motor is about 100 hours, and I think, I'm pretty sure he got it under warranty. He ended up deciding um, to actually just, uh, instead of just repairing his motor, he had some piston damage and cylinder wall damage. Uh, instead of repairing the motor, he basically is getting a, a new one. And uh, so he's missed out on a lot of flights, and I just wanted to let him know nothing to worry about. You haven't missed out anything it's all boring stuff <laughs> so I thought I'd show you some footage of, of some of the boring things you, you've missed out on here's a here's a plane the side I don't normally see here's a single engine plane out buzzing around some of the fields that uh, we normally do a lot of low flying around some of the cotton fields and where a lot of the feral hogs and pigs are and I was up fairly high this particular day it was early it was late afternoon two and a half or so hours before sunset a little bit bumpier so i like to get high and uh, stay safe another guy came out that that same night in a quicksilver getting in my way man it was just it was awful chris <laughs> um, actually i did have to worry about you know anytime i got a quicksilver a, a plane like this flying around it is, is it is a lot of fun but do have to worry about, uh, or at least I think about, you know, where his wake is, trying to stay upwind, or where I'm not going to fly through the his his prop wash and, and the the wake of his of his plane. I don't think it would be that super dangerous. He did, I don't think he creates that big of uh, turbulence, but really don't want to find out. So just enjoyed buzzing around with him it was boring Chris but but I enjoyed it a little bit <laughs> it was really cool to, to watch him he couldn't that plane he couldn't fly quite as slow as as I could obviously he did kind of get a high alpha you know nose up at least one pass and uh, here I think he's gonna fly even lower than I am he's you know practically landing uh, in the field where we where we do a lot of low flying there flying off into the, the setting sun I think this is the pass right here where he was I had trimmed out so I could fly as fast as I could uh, looks like I'm hitting a little bit of wake turbulence, probably his or mine, I don't know. Uh, you saw the camera bouncing around a little bit more. There, he's, he's trying to fly as slow as he can, and uh, but he's still passing. So then, I think it's a week later, you know, I got out for a morning flight and there's somebody else in the way up in the air, you know, causing obstacles for me to go around. <laughs> a hot air balloon is out in, in the same exact field that where the, the Quicksilver was, in my way. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of fun cruising around this guy. It was a really, really nice morning. It's always... Uh, always a joy to kind of buzz around those guys usually the passengers just have a, a, a giant smile i try not to outstay overstay my welcome and buzz them too much but uh, make a few passes and then get out of dodge so here's um i think the, uh, the next day or so i got out and uh met a buddy james who lives out a little bit further out of town than we do we don't normally launch at the same spot but join up with him 
for some fog splitting action. And again, real boring, Chris. You didn't miss much. Just uh, the fog's in the way. Everything's in the way when we're flying these days. Since you, since you've been out, we got quicksilvers, we got balloons, and, and the fog that you're having to push out of the way. There's James cutting the path through it. And uh, you know what can you do? Guess my buddy James had an idea of what he could do. He decided uh, this was sun it was a Sunday morning flight. He uh, attends a church out here in the country area where uh, he got a decent spot to land. He decided he would descend from the heavens and if you go to church that morning. He went to early church. I think it started at eight or eight o'clock or something. So uh, he's going to come in for a landing. I'm going to. I'm going to buzz over uh, past him, give a little shout woohoo as I go by, and uh, head back to my landing spot here in a little bit. But uh, one, thing, one thing he missed on the way is more balloons. Two balloons were out that morning uh, in between his church and where I had launched from, where I was headed back to. So I had to say hi to these guys and, and buzz around them just a little bit. I think you can see it in the yeah the camera doesn't doesn't show it but I think these guys normally launch um, from a, a school the Fulshire High School which is probably a quarter mile half a mile away off in the distance and the winds were so low this particular morning these guys were basically parked I suspect they could have got up really high and uh, and went a lot further but. Uh, I don't know, I, I've never actually had a balloon ride. I think most of it, they like to stay low and skim across the trees, and kind of like we do with the paramotors. But, um, of course, they're relying on the wind. They don't, they don't have the, the motor, the fan, pushing, pushing them around. And uh, so they were captive audience again. I buzzed them a few times. I had all, nothing but big smiles and waves from them, from what I could tell. So I think all was good. And just the other day, just this past week, it was good to get Roger back out. He's been uh, out of town, let's say, um, and I think he overhauled his engine. So he, he got up for his first flight, I guess, after after an overhaul and a, and a well, I had a break-in session before. We thought we'd do a little cross-country, but uh, he basically got about the furthest point, almost the furthest point we'd normally go and had an engine out. We think it's his carburetor, not sure what was up um, until he gets it, gets it diagnosed, but uh, you know, found a use uh, for the pumpkin. You see, I pull it out of my side pocket. We, I thought about landing, seeing if I could help him out, but uh, I think we both decided I, I couldn't really do anything, and even though I, I could have landed, it really, it was probably a better bet for me to basically stay in the air. I, I, he didn't have a stuff sack, so I pulled out my pumpkin, thanks to Tony, um, or NCPPG Pilot, I think is his uh, channel on YouTube. Um, great guy, I love, I love my pumpkin, so I did a little bombs away. Didn't get it as close as I, as I thought I should have, but I uh, have to practice dropping things <laughs> so I'm trying to hit the target but uh, brought it back in here I'm going to come in for a landing and uh, just so see Chris this is what you've been missing you know troubles people going down all the stuff in the air and uh, in the way sunsets the sun's going down running out of light it's just just awful settings. I don't know how I endure all this all this trouble. <laughs> so have a good one, everybody. And uh, Chris, we're ready to have you back flying again here shortly. I, I think from what I heard, you've got uh, your motors in and just need to get it all together and, and, and broken in.